So we look at this problem, we're looking at factoring by grouping. So what we'll do is we'll take the first two terms and put parentheses, and then the last two terms will be set with parentheses. Okay, so we're looking for GCF, right? GCF. So the greatest common factor can be a number of variable or the product of a number and variable. Well, we, we know that we have S squared and S to the first. So I can at least pull out an S, right? Now, let's see if I can pull out a number with that variable. I got a 1 here and a 4 there. So the greatest common factor between those is 1, so that really doesn't do anything for me. So as, if the greatest common factor is 1, then you're, you can't put out a, uh, a number, all right? So when we do this, we have two S's, and I pull one out, I'm left with an S. And then over here, I've got one S, I pull one out, I'm left with just four. Now, once you get that first parentheses, you look at the second parentheses, it has to be the same. And you can quickly check, can I pull out anything from there? Just in case you miss something, okay? Now, let's look at the second parentheses. What do I have to do to nine to make it be S? Well, I need to pull out a nine. Okay, nine divided by one, you can think of it as nine divided by one is nine. 36 divided by nine is positive four. Okay, so what we have is S plus nine. Okay, this S and that nine, and then S plus four. Okay, factor by grouping. The next example that we're looking at happens to be another factor by grouping. And let me get to it. All right. Um, 3V squared minus 20V minus 7. Okay, so this is a, a quadratic, okay? The reason it's a quadratic, it's in this form. Okay, there's three terms. We call it a quadratic because the highest power is a 2, okay? And... The second thing that we also call this, if, we, if we're classifying it as a polynomial, which means many monomials, then it's a trinomial because you have, you have um, one, two, and three monomials tied together. That means it's a trinomial. Okay, now, so we look at this. We'll go A is equal to 3, B is equal to negative 20, and C is equal to negative 7. Okay, so what we're going to do is I do a little decision tree. All right, and what's going to go in here is A times C, right? We're going to put A times C there, and I'm going to put B there, all right? So when I get over here and do this, A times C, so A times negative 20 is negative 60. No, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, A times C, 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. And then 20 is B down here. So I'm looking at two things. These two things right here that I just highlighted that we're going to find have to multiply to give me negative 21, but they have to also add to give me negative 20. So when I do this, I want to look at factors of 21. So I start out with 1. 1 times something will give me 21. 1 times 21. The next number is 2 after 1. 2 times 7 will not give me 21. Then I go to 3. 3 times 7 will give me 21. Okay. Well, 4 won't, 5 won't, 6 won't. The next number I have to go to is 7, and it's already on the other side. Okay. What I mean by on the other side, it is setting on the other side of the parentheses right here. Okay. That's what I mean by on the other side. So, what we're doing is, because this is a negative 21, we're looking at the difference, okay? So the difference from 21 to 20, or 21 and 1 is 20, and 7 and 3 is 4. Well, this number is what I'm looking for right here, this B, okay? So I know it's 1 and 21, but i got to make one of them positive and one of them negative, okay? So... The biggest number will always get the sign of B, and B happens to be negative right there, so it'll be a negative 21. So 1 times negative 21 is negative 21. 
1 plus negative 21 is negative 20. Okay, so what do I do with that? Well, here's what we're about to do. We, we have our 3v squared. We have 1v, that's a positive 1v, and then we also have a negative 21v, and then negative 7. So what we're doing with this, let me highlight this. What we're doing, these numbers right here happen to be, when added together, will give me the negative 20. V. Okay, so what we're trying to do is these two numbers, we're splitting the linear term, okay? We call it the linear term because it has a power of 1. That variable has a power of 1. So what we're doing, if we were to add these together, we'd get negative 20, right? So that's what we're doing. We're splitting it. Now, when we split it, that allows us to do this, okay? That allows us to do exactly what we've been doing. which is grouping, okay? Now, 3 and 1, I can't pull out a number because the greatest common factor of those is 1, but I can't pull out a V. I can't pull out a V to the first power. So that's going to leave me, if I have two Vs, it pull one out, it's going to leave me 3V. If I have one V and I pull it out, well, that's just going to leave me 1 times 1 because that would be just 1. Now, 3v plus 1. Now, negative 21, negative 21 divided by 3 gives me negative 7. Negative 7 right here divided by negative 7 gives me a positive 1. So that, that follows suit. So here we are. v minus 7, 3v plus 1. Okay? So let's kind of regroup. This has three terms, so what we did was we used the x to be able to find out what were our two numbers that split the linear term right here, this, this number right here. We did it with these two, right? Um, and that's what gave us this. And then now we can group them and, and follow suit, okay? So that's really the only new thing, okay? So you kind of go back up and kind of make sure you're solid on this. I use this decision tree. It's A times C and then the B. And then I put these two things have to multiply, right? This times has to give me these two multiplied have to give me this, right? Right there. And then these two added have to give me the negative 20. And that's what it is. And that's how you unsplit it. So there you go.